I'm staying. I'm finishing my coffee. Enjoying my coffee. Hello, everybody. This is a book review. A book review of a fantasy book. <laughs> Hence why I'm dressed like this. A fantasy book that came out last year. It's a fantasy book that is a little bit different. And there's a lot of buzz about it. Uh, a lot of people reviewing it on YouTube as well. So this is not the first review you'll find on YouTube. And uh, I am pretty much agreeing with all the reviews I've seen, to be fair. But it is worth talking about because it's such an unusual book. So, the book is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a book that came out last year. So, it's a very new book. 2022 it came out. And I'm pretty sure it's his first book. So, I've looked into it. He did write a children's book, which is only like 28 pages with lots of illustrations. So, it's definitely a children's sort of picture book. And he's done um, lots of... Uh, narration for audiobooks, which is his main job. So he's been a voice actor for many, many years, and he's done some game developing as well. So uh, this is his first full novel, and he's also about to release the prequel to this. So he got stuck in straight away and, and wrote a prequel to this, uh, which I will read, because uh, this is very good. So I'll tell you about um, what it's about. So Viv who is in the illustration on the original cover. That's Viv. Viv is an orc, and she is a barbarian uh, kind of soldier of fortune who was part of a band of mercenaries, and she's had enough of that kind of life, and she basically um, has this ambition to open a coffee shop. So, the book is literally about her adventure very gentle adventure, creating a coffee shop and introducing the people around her in this town that has never heard of coffee to coffee that she discovered thanks to some gnomes um, that were uh, distributing coffee where she was doing a job. So she fell in love with coffee and then she wanted to start this coffee shop. Uh, so um, in the meantime, she meets some um a few characters that become big characters in the plot and the story uh, and they become embroiled in her ambition and there's uh, a threat that she faces and to be fair the plot kind of takes you somewhere you think it's going and it and it ends up being something else which is quite nice and um that threat kind of creates a, a, a third act which then uh, f finishes the book. I'm not going to spoil it, um, but it. But the third act is the conclusion to this sort of um, uh, threat that's bubbling under in at the beginning. So uh, it's been called cosy fantasy. I've seen that phrase a lot connected to this book, and I've seen sometimes on booktube people talk about cosy fantasy or cosy horror or cosy science fiction. And um, I do think it's an interesting phrase. I think it's it can be a little bit damning because someone could could think, well, if there's nothing going on in it and it's a bit too gentle and lovely and friendly and and touchy feely, fluffy sort of thing, then I'm not going to bother reading it. Which would be a shame if you thought that. Um, I would say that the that um, it does it, it's such a huge characteristic of this book that. I think it's a positive and a negative, but I'll get to that later. Um, but this cosy fantasy phrase has been banded about a lot with this book. So if you feel like um, you want to try something different, because it's very different, so you want to go into a fantasy world where you've got all the fantasy tropes, like um, you know, Band of Mercenaries and like the uh, the Orc, uh, there's Succubus, there's a gnome in it, there's um, sort of a, a, a rattling, which is like a rat, hum a humanoid rat sort of thing. Um, so those kind of like, creatures, bat magic is, is a feature in it, um, magical weapons, uh, well, magical, not magical weapons so much, but magical items. Um, so some of those tropes uh, from general epic fantasy is in this book. 
So it is definitely a fantasy book, but if you wanted to see a different take on the fantasy realm and what you'd expect from a fantasy plot, then give this a go. Um, it's very entertaining and um, it's just not what you'd expect. Um, because it's a cosy fantasy, um, it's written in a particular way. So it's, it's a very character-driven book. Um, there is a plot. Um, I've given you what the plot is, but there's a few other elements to the plot that deepen it a little bit. Um, but that is essentially the plot. But it is all about characters. It's all about the relationships that are built over in the book. And it, the way it's written, it's really heavy on dialogue. Really well written dialogue. Really well written dialogue. But it is heavy on dialogue and the descriptive sections are quite to the point. So it's not got like overly poetic prose or anything. Um, I don't think there's any sentence in the in the descriptive sections that I was like, wow, that was an amazing way of saying that. But there were some elements of dialogue where I thought that was a fantastic way of saying that in the dialogue. So I think the strength of the book is the dialogue. And part of that is thanks to the, the character interactions and the character relationships that he's built in this book. That is definitely its strength. Um, and the characters are very real. And the way they, the way they, they're quite distinctive and they're quite lovable and you do care about them. And uh, just going into the sort of second third of the book, something pretty big happens. And if you like, that's the test to the reader about how much they care about the characters. And I think the beginning book kind of gently gets you into the characters so that you do really care by the time something major happens. So... Um, there's the, the character interaction is such that um, they all rely on each other and they also support each other but they also um, rely on each other in a in a way that's kind of characteristic of the overall tone of the book which is in a quite a gentle way so there's lots of unspoken moments there's lots of subtle under played moments like where people just nod or there's a couple of words or there's an unspoken look um, those kind of things are how a lot of the characters are interacting which is uh, clearly going to reinforce that tone for the book as a whole so um, I think you can get the idea that if it, it, it's so heavily uh, focused on dialogue and that dialogue is quite underplayed and there's a lot of like knowing nods and and um, looks that tell characters what they're thinking and all those kind of things. You can see that it's quite an underplayed narrative in general, and descriptions are to the point and not particularly poetically written. So, so you can see that this is quite a to the point book, which could be I don't know. You can't make assumptions, but it could be that because his career was as a voice actor mostly, it might be that um, he relates really well to dialogue. And um, the uh, descriptions are very, they're very clear, but he doesn't really want to go into one as far as um, writing this sort of beautiful prose because for him, that's not what this is about. It's not why he writes. It's not how he wants to tell the story. So I don't really have an issue with that, uh, but I have got a couple of issues with the book, but I haven't got an issue with that at all. And I do think it helps the pace really well. It's, a, it's quite a short book, so... This is uh, 280 pages or something, but there's a there's a short story at the end of it as well called Pages to Fill, which is a bit of a prequel story about Viv, the uh, the main character, the orc. Um, so it's quite short. It's only like 260 pages or something. Um, so you know, it's the 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 book would be a longer book if it spent a little longer on the descriptive elements of it. And if he dwelt a little longer on some of the scenes that could have been quite dramatic, but he skipped the drama early on, certainly, to focus on characters, on character development. So, because of that, there is inevitably a different level of tension than you might get in a really intense, dramatic, action-based plot or action-based book. So 
So the tension is sort of simmering away. And even when the tension really hits, it doesn't hit in a in a really strong, shocking slash upsetting slash moving way, really. You're a bit moved, but I think you're... Because you do care about the characters, but I don't think it's got the impact it might have had if he wrote with that different tone, certainly in those moments. So there's a there's a lack of tension running through the whole thing, which is not that negative because the focus isn't on that. Um, but if I compared that, for example, because I was thinking about this when I was reading it, if I compared it to Becky Chambers' books, the Wayfarer series that have had criticisms for not having enough tension in it and being too character-based... There is more tension in what Becky Chambers writes and the tension between the characters is quite palpable and usually what's happening around them has got a lot more threat to it and a lot more potential consequences and that's sort of underpinning the action a little bit. So even if there is less action, the threat is stronger and the way it's written is more intense. So this this is a, a comparison in the sense that both science fiction and for fantasy, both these books respectively have been talked about as being very character-driven and being very cosy. But I think with Becky Chambers is slightly less cosy because the threat's bigger and the, the relationships between the characters are more intense. The relationships in this in this is, is so 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 cosy, they're literally like all across the board. Every new scene, every new development in the character is more affirmation. It's more um, support and there's more. There's not a lot of antagonism between the characters, so that's a big part of why it's so cozy. So, um, yeah, and I was gonna, I wasn't gonna spoil it, but I was gonna say I do like the ending. I think the ending's really good, except for one aspect of the ending, which I'll get to in a second. But I like the way it wraps up. So, what do I? What issues have I got with it? So basically, um, I think it would have been nice if it had been dwelt on a little bit more on some of the scenes. So, and, and, and with the ending, um, there's an epilogue, which there's a really lovely, sweet ending before the epilogue, which is really awesome. But all I'm going to say is with the epilogue, when you read it, I don't know if you know what I mean, but I wish the epilogue was Viv rather than the cat. I think I can say that without spoiling it. Yeah, so that's what I feel about the ending. Um, that that epilogue was a little bit like I don't know. Just for me personally, because that's the thing, you know, you you shouldn't criticize something because you would have written it differently. But I just think it would have added that extra little bite to it and more of a reference to what she was in the past if it had ended with a little sneaky kind of um, um, moment where she went back to her past for a second. I think that would have been lovely, um, just to show that it's still there, but she was focusing on the ca on the coffee shop. And so that's how I feel about the ending. But also, um, the band of mercenaries that she would belong to, um, they're in it. They're not a part of this new life, but they're in it. And they do get involved um, in a really cool way, actually, when they do get involved. But the relationship with Viv and these characters is pretty slight in the book. It's not developed that much. And I think that could have been a really nice element at the beginning before it moves on to the coffee shop plot. And the prologue of the book does feature them in it. And the prologue is her being a barbarian, but it's very short. It's very slight. It's very incidental. You can see that Travis Baldry wants to move on from that very quickly. And I think that could have been dwelt on a little bit more. And if, and if you compare it to... Um, this kings of the wild so kings of the wild is about band of mercenaries i absolutely love this book and i found it very difficult to criticize this at all i think this is just i don't know i'm gonna say it maybe it's a perfect book i don't know but i, I couldn't i found it very hard to, to criticize i loved it to death but one of the chief things about this is the relationship between the band of mercenaries that are getting back together again to save uh, one of the mercenaries daughter um, the plot's really cool, but also just, you know, it's all that book hinges on their relationships and the fact that you um, can really vividly see how they relate to each other. Um, so this one, those relationships aren't very 
obvious and they're not very distinctive and they don't really stay in your mind. And when they come back later, it's not, you haven't got a really vivid image of those characters in the same way that you would have done in that book. And some other books I've read like that. So I think more development that would have been cool. Um, you do get a real strong sense of the people in the present day, if you like, the people that are in the coffee shop plot that are, are part of the coffee shop. You do definitely get that. But I feel like he didn't want to focus at all on the band of mercenaries that she comes from. So I think it would have been nice to have more of that. Partly because you get more sense of Viv then. I mean, he has written this prequel now where you're clearly going to get more of Viv. Um, but are you gonna, I don't know, because he likes writing like this, are you going to get that sense of what they were like as a band of mercenaries? I don't know. Uh, but we'll see. But that was definitely one of the things that I was thinking while I was reading it. And there's just a few moments where um, I like the fact that it, it, it surprises you a few times. You think it's going to go a certain way. You think the threat is a certain thing. Um, and it's not what it ends up being. Um, there's, there's kind of two threats that are looming. And you think they're either going to join together or the most obvious threat is going to be the big one. Um, or even both of them are going to be issued separately. And in the end, one of them that you think is the main one doesn't end up being a big threat. So um, I think that's quite well the way that was done. But in all of those moments, though, it, there could have been a little bit more tension so that the uh, when it was resolved, there was more of a feeling of, of you feeling relieved for Viv and, and the other characters as well. There was also another character um, who's... Uh, Tandri, who's the secondary character, if you like, in the book. And she's got this other plot going on that's not really developed that much, and that's just a bit of a funny, slight thing that could have been uh, more of a point as well. I mean, if you, if you added, like, 50 pages onto this, you could have put those kind of things in it. And, and again, you know, he clearly didn't want to put that in there, and that's fine. I don't think it should be about criticising what's not there as a plot point. But I just feel like you would have... That he's he's hinting lots of times that there's a problem um, with this particular character for Tandri and, and, and it doesn't really go anywhere. So I do think that's true as well. But I will say that um, uh, one of the nice things as well that I don't think is as important as the other things I've said, but it is an important thing because it's so subtle and so well done, and that is the representation is really cool because uh, if you are interested in looking for representations of a gay community... Um, there's a, a really nice element to that, which, again, if I, if I say too much, it will spoil it, but it does become um, a feature of the book in a really positive and good way that I think, you know, is written really um, well. And, and part of the cosy thing as well, I guess, that um, it's one of the sort of sort of happy elements to the book. Um, but again, you know, that could be that could have been more tense in places. But in general, though, I don't think that would would have been a source of tension. So I think that it's just done really well, that element of the book. So, so yeah, representation is really cool in that as well. And and also I think there is this sense with the, with a lot of the characters that they're um, not necessarily lost, but they have been, um, they found this lovely community around the coffee shop and that, that it's, it's a very positive thing for them as characters. And I think that's really cool. So there we go. Um, I am definitely going to read the prequel. Um, it's I, on on Goodreads. I gave it four out of stars, but four out of five, four out of stars, four out of five stars. I probably would have given it four point five to be fair, because I've only got those really small criticisms. I think it's very good, and it was a nice fun read. Uh, but yeah, I just think it, and more tension would have been nice. Bit more development in their relationships outside the coffee shop, and that sense of if it, if she was part of a band of mercenaries, you know the way just comparing it to kings of the wild where he does so well i think um it's definitely um definitely could be done in a more vivid way where um you really feel the overall nature of the of her old friends um you do get that with the new friends though and then just that other um reiteration with that comparison with Becky Chambers, I think again she puts more tension in what she does, but they're both I can see why they both have that word cozy connected to them. Um so so yeah, it's a it's an easy read, it's a fun read, it's very it is cozy in the sense that it's um a very pleasant read. There's nothing too ugly or horrible in it. 
and it's a new take on how, what to do with fantasy, really, because most fantasy that I can think of has got sort of not, you know, some brutal elements, but even if it's not brutal, some violent en elements and you know, the looming of war or some big scale thing or something, even if it's a small plot, something that um, they've, they've got some kind of context of a bigger thing happening. Um, and there's, um, there's, there's sort of uh, morally questionable things happening around the book as well. Whereas that's not really a thing here, which I think is why it is quite different. So there we go. If you fancy something a bit different and you like the sound of that and you've seen some of the buzz that's happened on Booktube recently about this because only listened last year, Legends and Lattes, give it a go. It's a good book. It's fun. Thanks a lot. Oh, and they were all loving coffee. But just think, just think how... The, just if they just discovered Tetley Tea, how that would blow their tiny minds. Bring me a picture of what it's like to be.